All right, this is the diagnosis and testing of our EVAP valves here. This is from the LS430. Now, both of these valves can be found on every Toyota model. Every Lexus has them somewhere. Uh, this one's the vapor pressure sensor. This is what was causing the P0440 engine light. So this 89460-50030, it's not available separately, so you have to buy the charcoal canister to get this, these two valves. This one is just, um, I think this is either the, the purge solenoid or a different solenoid, but if you apply 12 volts to this one, it clicks and then opens and closes. Usually not any issues with this one. Um, so this one is what we're kind of going to be looking at today. Um, just testing it off the car and going through the procedure just to verify that it actually was bad because um, that's the kind of thing I like to do. I need to know um, once I replace something just verify that something was actually wrong with the part I replaced. So here are the actual uh, factory testing procedures if you will. So it says the vehicle uses a vacuum type evaporative emissions control system. Purge vacuum is um, forcefully introduced in the entire system. Leaks are detected by monitoring changes in pressure. So essentially your fuel tank, um, it's, th there's lines and vacuum hoses from the fuel tank to the charcoal canister to the engine, and there needs to be a certain amount of pressure in that entire system. So vacuum switching valve for canister closing valve. Um, it sounds like that's the one that works fine. And then a replacement of the three-way VSV for vapor pressure sensor. Um, with a vapor sensor VSV for pressure switching valve. So this just tells you the differences, uh, older systems, older years. So here we go. P0440 sets off on a cold start. PCM detects a rapid sharp increase in pressure after the VSV is turned off. Uh, so the system should be sealed when it's switched off. Um, blah, 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 blah. So possible causes, obviously, the gas cap loose, the gas cap gasket, um, cracked vacuum lines, or the vapor pressure sensor. So that's the one we're looking at. Uh, to check the vapor pressure sensor, uh, run test. So that is, you, I guess you can do this in text stream as well. You can run the EVAP test that tests all the sensors. Um, so here's the sensor. And then here's the entire charcoal canister. So like I said um, in the other video, you can get this for around 190 bucks from Japan. They run between 300 and 400 if you were to buy them in the United States from a dealer, online source. And again, you can't buy this separately. You can sometimes find people selling used ones or whatever, but I mean, for the price, you might as well just get the whole thing with all the hoses, the two valves, and the canister. Um, this is just basically saying what I just said before. So this sensor is uh, only using 5 volts, so that's an important thing right here. It's not normal uh, 12 volt like you would think. It's actually regulated down 5 volt, the sensor voltage. Um, so the sensor varies then from a half volt to 4.5 volts with fuel tank pressure. So more or less pressure in the fuel tank changes the voltage and then um, everything kind of works as it should and opens, closes. Um, but if that sensor is not working, the rest of the system can't work correctly. So when pressure tank is low, voltage is low. When pressure is high, the output voltage is high. So... Um, what this is going to show us when we test it, um, it's thinking that the pressure is high because the sensor is always outputting high voltage at all times. So here's where it tells you how to test the actual sensor. 
um, you'll need to remove the right side drive axle if the canister removal um, so yes like I talked about in the other video you have to remove the axle and again if you're you have to do this anyways to remove the canister to replace the valve so you might as well just replace the whole thing like I said here's just the sensor connector so negative is one side the signal is the middle and then the positive so negative positive and then the signal is the middle so I'll show you how to measure that um, these are just some notes here handy notes um, let's see uh, VSV for canister closed valve is most common part to malfunction so these are like technician notes over the history of this error and what people report so there have been several um, ECM updates and new ECUs that kind of fix some of the issues. Uh, but basically, so we're going to apply um, we're going to apply five volts, and we should read three to three point six right off the bat. So then, if we add pressure or add vacuum, the vol that voltage should change. So add add vacuum and the pressure the voltage should drop to 1.3 to 2.1. Uh, we don't have pressure, but we can probably blow into the hose and it should increase to 4248. However, the sensor is bad; it's already reading that. So I'll show you that in a second. So here we go. So here's our positive on the one end, and then our signals in the middle, and then our ground is on the other end. And basically, um, our meter here is connected to the negative, and then our positive probe, we're going to check the, the actual voltage going into it, and then we're going to clip on the alligator in the middle to get the reading, which should be lower than actual. So we're going to verify right now we have 5 volts, just as specified, so the sensor is powered on and ready to work. Now this middle one, it should read, like this says, uh, 3 to 3.6 volts. So we've got 5 here, and now we're going to hook on here, and we're at 4.48. So that's already a problem, because 4.48 should be what it reads under pressure, 0.22 PSI. So that's a problem. This should be reading 3 to 3.6 right now. So we're going to use a little hand vacuum here to the large port, introduce vacuum, and we're going to see that that voltage is not even changing at all. It holds vacuum, so that's good, but that doesn't do us much uh, of anything. So the sensor is definitely bad. This is the cause of the P0440, and life is good. Um, and that's it. So that's how you test this. It's, there's really no way you can test this on the car because of just where it is. Some cars, this is just in the engine bay. It's a lot easier to do. Um, but this one, for whatever reason, they decided to just bury. And then I can show you this other one here. This is just the... I forget what it actually does. I think this is just the purge valve or another valve that just opens and relieves pressure somewhere. So this one, not like that, um, am I in the right line, I am not. So we've got power on one end, you can hear it clicking, and this one, it works either way, um, but again this is, this is 12 volt, this one is not um, 5 volt, so keep that in mind and I can show you here how this works. So this will just go on to here, and we will introduce vacuum, and it holds about uh, eh, 50, 16 inches of vacuum. And then if we activate the solenoid, it will release it. So it opens up, releases the pressure. So this one's working fine. Like I said, these usually don't go bad. And this, act, this valve is used for a lot of other things. It's just a, a basic solenoid open and closed. So this might be used for like the vacuum um, 
differential, front differential, rear differential, whatever, and various different models to activate it. But it's just a basic solenoid, open closed. So that's it. Um, case closed on the EVAP emissions issue with this uh, vapor pressure sensor. And uh, yeah, I hope I help some people out. And uh, as usual, if you have any questions or want me to look into testing anything else or show you anything else on video, let me know. See ya.